Welcome back to Autumn Reads with the Somerville Public Library. I'm Lily, and today I'm joined by Melinda and Allison, also librarians at the Somerville Public Library. And we're going to be telling you a little bit about some things we've been reading and some fun upcoming reads at the Somerville Library. Melinda, would you like to start? So when I think of autumn books, I think of kind of spooky and then school-related books. So I kind of have a mix of two of them. So the first one I have is Friday Black by Nana Kwam Ajay Brenya. And it's a collection of short, short stories. And I first picked it up because I actually did judge the book by its cover. It's a nice cover. Yeah. It's, just, it's beautiful. Um, so these short stories, they remind me a lot of Black Mirror, like that kind of sci-fi dystopia, mm. yet it's kind of similar to real life. A lot of these stories are pretty heavy. It's about like police brutality and capitalism and just greed. There's one short story about um, this man and he has to sell all these jackets for a Thanksgiving Day sale and it just ends up in chaos. And even though it's very exaggerated, as someone that's worked in public service since I was 15, I was like, I can relay, honestly. <laughs> Too um, close to real life, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's a very up-and-coming author. He's won lots of recent awards, and I very much enjoy it. It's nice. a very spooky read. Awesome. So. Oh, now I know Allison yep. read this. Yes. I've read it. <laughs> it's been on my to-read yeah. sh shelf at home, too. So this one has gotten quite a lot of buzz. It's Normal People by Sally Rooney. And this is my kind of school read. It's about two teenagers um, in Ireland, Marianne and Connell. And they kind of have this on-again, off-again relationship that extends beyond college. And this is the kind of book I really wish I had when I was 20. And I just, it really captures how when you're in your 20s, you don't know what's happening. You don't know how to define things. And it's really touching. It's very character driven. And I think it's a really good read. I thought it was so well yeah. written. Yeah. Um, I think it deals with a lot of intense topics, mm -hmm. um, but just very, very well written. I think she's a great writer. Yes, I enjoy her. She also did um, Conversations with Friends. It's kind of like the same vein of character driven. And my last read is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. She's one of my favorites. She's an LGBTQ plus icon and also very good historical novels. And I particularly like this one because it reminds me a lot of our Summerville Reads book we'll be doing this fall, Haunting of Hill House. Ooh. Um, it's about this doctor, Dr. Faraday, and he's called upon this um, mansion in England that's kind of crumbling in disarray for the heirs family who, after World War I, they're kind of struggling to make do. And whenever he comes to visit, paranormal activity kind of starts happening. And just like Haunting in a Hell House, there's an unreliable narrator, this very like um, lush, beautiful scenes of the England countryside. And it's very spooky. Love, That's perfect excellent. autumn read. I, yeah. I might want to grab yeah. that from you, if I can uh. wrestle it away from Allison. <laughs> oh. um, what do you have for us, Allison? So let's see, I will start, I, I have a full range of children's books. I'm going to start awesome. with teen and, and go younger. Awesome. So I've brought one um, young adult or teen read called Hearts Unbroken by Cynthia Letish Smith. Um, and this is a great, like you're saying, kind of fall back to school. This book mm -hmm. follows Louise, who's a senior in high school, um, through most of a year of school. And she deals with some of the things that you would expect. Like she has this bad boyfriend, and then she has a good boyfriend, and her you know, sibling stuff, friend drama. She's on the school newspaper. There's all this weird stuff going on there. But the big... Um, point of the book is that the school musical, which is The Wizard of Oz, is cast using inclusive casting. So there's a black oh, cool. Dorothy and there's a native Tin Man. Um, and some of the town is just up in arms about this. So the kids in the book really have to decide how, how far are they going to go in pushing for what they think is right and what they think is just. And Louise um, is native and she has to decide how much of her native heritage she's going to kind of show publicly mm, yeah. um, and to her, her mostly white school community. And there's, um, so that's just a really interesting part of her character. There's also a lot of microaggressions and a lot of things to really think about in how um, a native girl um, in a mostly white community would feel. So yeah. I thought this was a great book. Interesting. I recommend yeah. it. For sure. Um, so then going 
backward, we'll go to middle grade oh. graphic novels. These novels are so, so cute. I think if you know any one who's like between maybe seven and 15, they have probably read <laughs> all of Raina Telgemeier's books. She has Smile, Sisters, Ghosts, and also Drama, um, which are fantastic. Everybody yeah. loves them. Raina is just a rock star. Um, and Ghosts and Drama are fiction, but Sisters and Smile are kind of memoir based on Raina Telgemeier's real um, preteen and teen years. Mm -hmm. And she has a new book this fall mm -hmm. called Guts. <laughs> which is like Smile and Sisters, um, based on her life. She had a real bout with anxiety um, and kind of resulting physical stomach problems. And so this book kind of talks about, normalizes anxiety and talks about coping mechanisms and strategies That's and health care and things like that. And so I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be just as much of a hit as Rena's other books, sure. and she is just the best ever. So wonderful! <laughs> Can't wait oh, that for sounds that. Great, yeah, for sure. Um, and then I know a lot of kids are going back to school, and a lot of families are thinking, like, how can I support my child um, learning to read? So I've brought some of our favorite phonics books that we recommend at the library. Um, so first I'll share the Bob books. So the best thing about the Bob books is also the worst thing about the Bob books. They're adorable, right? But there's 12 of them and they come in this little box. <laughs> okay. So if you check them out, you have to keep track of all 12 at home, which oh, I think is kind of a nightmare, but they're so cute. <laughs> so, so the Bob books um, are sorted by reading level and you'll see that they just have a couple words per page. Mm -hmm. um, and each one focuses on a different phonetic sound. Um, and they really help the kids gain confidence in reading and learn that you know, certain letters form certain sounds. Um, so I really, plus they're just so cute and they come in this yeah. <laughs> So I really recommend the Bob books as long as you feel that you can keep track of them. Um, <laughs> um, and then another one of my favorites are these We Both Read books. Um, that's another series, and at the West Branch we keep them all together. I know they do at Central and East as well, so you can mm -hmm. find all the phonic phonics books in one place. Um, so We Both Read has a page for a grown-up to read oh. and a page oh. for a child I to read. I love that. That's and nice. um, they are leveled, so you can start with something very basic. Um, um, and so, like, for example, I'll read you this page. I run down the hall. This is the, the parents' part. I run down the hall with my doggie named Tom. We rush to the kitchen and both hug. My, my mom. mom. So the, the <laughs> child's part is rhymes and has a picture identifier. So it's okay. really easy for the child to yeah. read, right? Because they have so many clues to help them figure out what book is coming next. Um, and they go up in level to make it a little more difficult um, for the child as they learn to read more. Um, there's so many. There's fiction, nonfiction, all sorts of different books. So the We Both Read um, books I recommend very much for kids very who nice. are learning to read. And that is what I have. Great. Well, I brought a couple of things, too. Um, one thing that I recently read and really liked is The Night Tiger by Yang Si Chu. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. It was um, one of Reese Witherspoon's picks. Oh, I, I know that it's a little bit silly, but I she actually really chooses great books. So, she um, does, yeah. She does, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Um, so this book takes place in Malaysia in the 1930s. Um, there are a lot of different storylines going on, but they all sort of intertwine at the end. So um, there's a murder plot and a sort of family drama plot, and then um, even a sort of like f almost fantasy mystical plot, and they all converge at the end. Um, and also you get to sort of learn about 1930s Malaysia. It was still under um, colonial control at that time. So it's just a sort of fascinating combination of like, armchair travel, but also learning about a different country and um, also some sort of mystery and fantasy. Um, really, really great book. Yeah, I really liked this Did one. Pachinko? I started reading Pachinko, but I didn't finish it. Oh. Um, it was really long. It was long. But yes. I, some, some of the, not all of what you said, but some of what you said made me think of Pachinko, like the really experiencing a different culture. Yeah. And, um, but Pachinko didn't have the fantasy elements that you're describing there. I think I'm going to put that one on my You list. should. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe it was the fantasy elements that kind of got me through this one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's not quite as long as Pachinko either, but I, I have been meaning to finish it. I just I, did. I, I thought it was great. It was very popular. 
that's, I returned it because I felt bad having it for, for too long. Um, but I'm going to circle back for sure. Um, but yeah, if you like Pachinko, I would definitely recommend this. Yeah, check it out. Um, and then we didn't have any nonfiction books, so I also grabbed Save Me the Plums, which I, you should read it, take it home with you. Um, I read it, it was a really quick read, so um, it is the latest memoir from Ruth Reichel, who has written a whole bunch of memoirs uh, that are food related and, and books that are food related. And she was the last um, editor in chief of Gourmet Magazine before they folded. And it was just, a really fascinating read. I mean, she is a wonderful writer, and so mm -hmm. it's like kind of immersive. You really feel like you're there with her and with the whole um, editorial team. But she also um, just sort of like gets into the New York City food scene. I'm like a huge food lover, so it was really fun to read about that. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anyone who likes food or memoirs or New York City. Um, she goes to Paris too on a little trip. Um, so I think that was sort of fun to read about as well. Yeah. Yeah, you should definitely read it. Really fun. Um, and then one last thing that I wanted to talk about, and I know you guys want to talk about as well, but I forgot the book. <laughs> That's okay. Um, is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Yay. Jackson, which we're so excited about because it's our, as you know, our 2019 Somerville Reads pick. Um, it is the sort of classic haunted house story, as Melinda mentioned. There's an unreliable narrator. Um, just, it's gonna be a really fun series, I think. We're gonna be doing programming, as you know, for children and for adults. Um, there'll be an escape room, and we're gonna have a tarot workshop, and all of our book clubs um, in the month of October, which is when the season runs, will be reading The Haunting of Hill House, including the West Branch. Um, they have a Books to Movies book club, so I think it's gonna be really fantastic. Yes. Yeah. And the program is just really innovative and different from anything. Totally. That we've done before. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like it really is like everything's coming together really nicely and I, I love a spooky October yes. pick. Mm -hmm. And I want to read this too to tie it in. It seems like yeah. it's be really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there are a bunch of children's books that yeah, tie we'll in as well, right? Yeah, children's reading list. So, um, you know, that will kind of range from not at all spooky to yeah. kind of spooky depending on where, <laughs> where the child in your life uh, likes to read. So yeah. I definitely have a children's compliment. Now, have either of you read The Haunting of Hill House yet? I have. We've yes. all read it. Mm -hmm. Something I really liked about it is that it's not, it's spooky and there's the unreliable narrator, mm -hmm. but it's not really scary. Like, yes. It's not gory or anything. It's psychological, just, right? I think. It's very psychological. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. it's it's very different from the Netflix series. I started yes. reading or watching the Netflix series. I'm like, oh, it's a little spooky. Which did you do first? The the Netflix? Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, this is too much. And I read the book, and I'm like, this is also spooky in a different. Yeah, kind of I different. haven't watched the Netflix show yet, or the original movie, oh. which was from when the '60s. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'll have to do that. Um, I will say that I watched the whole Netflix series after I read the book. And I loved it, although there are a lot of jump scares, for sure. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen the 1960s film yet, but we are planning a movie screening at the library, so I think that that will be really fun. Yeah. Oh, and I visited this summer the Winchester Mystery House in Ooh. California, yes, which is apparently yeah. one of the places that Shirley Jackson, like, took um, inspiration from. It's this like crazy oh. old house that has, you know, stairs that go to nowhere. This one woman built it over a 30 period. Yeah. yeah, like her, like she was, oh my gosh, sorry to get into this right now. <laughs> but this woman, she was living in Connecticut and she was the heir to the Winchester rifle um, fortune. And she, um, her whole, basically her whole family died. And she was really guilt-ridden because she, you know, all of these people were dying because of these Winchester yeah. rifles. And um, so she moved to California with her last remaining relative, her sister, and she built this crazy house. That's sort of all she does for 30 years. And it is so spooky and so much fun to visit. Ooh, where in yes. California? It's just, um, I believe it's just south of San Francisco. So I was visiting San Francisco and I drove down there and it was very, very cool. Yeah, you're not expecting it. You're like in this um, very corporate feeling environment and then you turn a corner and there's this crazy gothic Victorian house. Yeah, so um, 
I feel like there's a, a lot to love and a lot to learn about with the Haunting of Hill House, and mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a really fun uh, set of programs this year for sure. So thanks, Allison, for sharing some of your reading recommendations. Thank you, Melinda. I'm really Welcome. excited to read that one in particular. Um, and thank you guys for joining us and listening to us talk about our upcoming programs and some fun books that we're reading at the Somerville Public Library. If you'd like to learn more about our upcoming programming, check out our website. Um, it's somervillepubliclibrary.org.